Hi, Crossroads family. My name is Jorge Sucre, and I am the youth director for Crossfire, CBC's youth ministry. And I want to welcome you to today's service. Like always, today we're going to praise God through song. We're going to read scripture. We're going to spend time together. We're going to do church because church is not a building. You are in church. So welcome to church. Today we're going to continue our study of the Sermon on the Mount, specifically the Beatitudes, and we now go to Matthew 5, 5. So I want to invite you to open your Bibles to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, 5, verse 5, to continue our study of the Beatitudes. Like every week, we want to invite you to engage, to sing, to read, to take notes, to underline, to maybe talk to your family after the service, discuss what the sermon said to you, and to maybe join one of our small groups during the week where people discuss these sermons and these messages in more depth. Once again, thank you so much for being with us, and welcome to church. So let's start. Vamos a empezar diciendo, oh, abre mis ojos. Let's start saying, open the eyes of my heart. Oh, open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Come on. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Santo, díselo al Señor pueblo. Santo, Santo, Santo. Santo, Santo, Santo. Yo quiero verte. Yo quiero see This year, I want to see you. I want to see your glory, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hello, Christ family. I hope you have had an excellent week. I also hope that those who have been participating in the small group of the Sermon of the Mount have having a really good time, where they can deepen into the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ. To those who are not part of a small group, I encourage them to join one of the existing groups. For that, you can let us know your desire to the email below on the screen to assign them to a small group. The last Sundays, 
during our missionary moment, we have been analyzing what Luke says in Acts 1.8 and how CBC is fulfilling the mandate to make disciples. Last week, in part one, the ends of the earth, we saw how at Crossroads we support missionaries who in obedience to God's call to make disciples have moved to faraway countries and adapted to new cultures. Today, we will see how CVC is reaching the Samaria Luke mentions, which in our case is those cultures we are somewhat closer to. Let's start with Rachel Chapman, who grew up as the daughter of missionaries in Panama, was part of the CVC congregation, a place where according to her testimony, she heard the Lord's call to missions. God sent her to Mexico, and since 2009, she has been living and working among the Nahuatl people, group in a remote mountainous area in the Sierra Madre region. Currently, she is part of the Bible translating team working to obtain a Bible in their dialect. Next, Carlos Gomez, who is a member of CVC. He has been the executive director of the missionary agency Para Alcanzar al Mundo since its creation. During 2021, he will also be with the missionary agency Wycliffe as the regional facilitator of Alliances, America's area, where he will be working to develop connections with churches and plant partners on the continent to collaborate in the translation into languages in America that still need a translation of the Bible. Bill and Anne Biven, who were members of CVC while they lived in Panama for 32 years. Bill has worked for the weekly missionary agency where he has served as a translator and translation consultant for the Americans region. Currently, he works with two translation projects in Mexico, and in his position, he is also in charge of training new consultants. In these places of nearby cultures, two workers reappear that we have already seen involved in taking the gospel to the ends of the earth, the keener and the missionary agency, PAM. Andy and Lori Kinner, who we said work for the weekly missionary agency in the project of strategic alliances with local churches, work for the translation of the Bible in unreached people or people groups that do not have the Bible, specifically Central and South America and the Panamanian Missionary Agency Para Alcanzar el Mundo, which is an important partner of Crossroads in terms of missions. This agency collaborates with local churches to bring the gospel to the least rich people of the world. They currently have 14 full-time workers and 14 associate workers, all serving with six partner organizations in 14 countries from six regions. Among these regions, we see the Americas. As we see, our church has been obedient in the call to make disciples in nearby cultures and to the ends of the earth, supporting those peoples who obey the call to go. I ask you not to forget what the world says the harvest is great but the workers are few we will always have the opportunity to go or send more workers next week we will see how we are carrying the good news in our own cultures our beloved country panama i ask that we not stop praying for our missionaries that God give them 
health, wisdom, direction, and provision to continue fulfilling the Great Commission. Finally, I want to wish you a week full of blessings. Okay, let's continue worshiping the Lord. You know something? In this, this year and every day, it's all about Jesus in your life and my life. Es una cosa, todos los días, en este año y todos los días, todo se trata de Jesús, de Jesús se trata, de Cristo en nuestras vidas. Vamos a cantar eso. Gózatela ahí en la casa con la familia. Enjoy this, enjoy this song with your family at home. When the music fades, all is stripped away in a simply calm. Longing just to bring something that's of worth that will bless your heart. Come on, give it. I give you more than a song, for a song in itself. It's not what you have required, no. You search much deeper within, through the way things appear. You're looking into my heart. I'm coming back. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. And it's all about you. It's all about you. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it. And it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. Dile, soberano rey, dile al Señor. Soberano rey. No sé cómo expresar lo que mereces tú. Oh, aunque no hay mucho en mí, todo lo que soy te pertenece a ti. Dile y te doy, te doy más que una canción, pues solo una canción no es lo que esperas de mí. It's all about you. It's all about you. Come on, right, right there where you are. Ahí donde está, say, it's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you. Dile pueblo, dile, se trata de ti. Gózalo. It's all about you. Se trata de ti. 
Díselo al Señor, díselo al Señor. Se trata, se trata de ti, se trata de ti. Se trata de ti, solo de ti, Cristo. Perdóname por haberme desviado. Se trata de ti, solo de ti. One more time, say. Estoy volviendo al corazón de la adoración. De 2021 todo se trata de ti Señor como siempre like always it's all about you thank you Jesus thank you Jesus and thank you for the cross thank you for the price that you have paid for us Lord thank you for your love Let's let us give let's give thanks. Thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the price you paid, bearing all my sin and shame. In love you came and gave amazing grace. Thank you for this love, Lord. Say thank you. Thank you for the nail pierced hands. Wash me in your cleansing flow. Now, oh, I know your forgiveness and embrace. Say worthy.
Jesus, you are worthy. Tú eres digno, Señor. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Canta con nosotros y bendice a tu familia que está alrededor. Ahí. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. We want to say it one more time. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon, be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen, amen. Can you help us say amen? Amen. Recibas esta bendición en español ahora. Dios te guarde y bendiga que extienda su amor y te muestre favor. Dios te guarde con agrado y te, te de paz. Dios, Dios te guarde y bendiga, que extienda, que extienda su amor y te muestre favor. Todos dicen, ah, yo no sé tú, pero yo recibo. Amén. Amén. Dilo una vez más. Amén. 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 Yo recibo esa 
la bendición para mi familia también. Amén. Queremos declarar algo poderoso y hermoso para todo el pueblo en este 2021. Recibe esto, dice, que te cubra con su gracia hasta mil generaciones, tu familia y tus hijos y los hijos de tus hijos. Que te cubra, que te cubra con su gracia hasta mil generaciones. Tu familia y tus hijos y los hijos de tus hijos. Make his favor be upon you in a thousand generations and your family and your children and the children and the children. Hey, make his favor be upon you in a thousand generations and your family and your children. Children of your children, su presencia te acompañe donde quiera que tú vayas, que te llene, te rodee, va contigo, va contigo de mañana y de noche en tu entrada y salida en tu llanto. Because we can we can trust you Lord no matter what we left behind Lord we can trust that you are with us Lord you're still you're still in your throne Lord we are your people Gracias, Señor. 
porque no importa lo que hemos dejado atrás Señor tú eres Dios tú sigues en tu trono y nosotros somos tu pueblo Señor ponemos nuestras vidas en tus manos en este nuevo año a nuestros familiares a nuestros hijos a los hijos de nuestros hijos a todos los que han nacido los que no han nacido todavía todos están en tus manos Señor we are our family our family is in your hands we our children and the children of our children all of us we are in your hands Lord thank you for being our God Gracias por ser nuestro Dios. Our refuge, nuestro refugio. Our strength, nuestra fuerza. Our provider, nuestro proveedor. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Because we can freely worship your name. Gracias porque con libertad podemos alabarte. Gracias, Señor. Thank you. And now we are willing to hear words of life from you Lord Señor estamos dispuestos estamos deseando escuchar palabras de vida palabras de vida en este primer culto del año Señor te amamos we love you Jesus amén Hello Crossroads family and welcome to another virtual Sunday service here at CBC. I hope that you guys have all had an excellent week and I want to thank you once again right now today for taking time out of your schedules to be with me again in this space. Thank you so very much and welcome to each and every one of you. You can tell by looking at what's behind me that today I'm talking with you from our workshop that we have here in our home. You know, a workshop is a place where a, a carpenter uses tools to create and fashion and form out of ugly pieces of wood something beautiful and something useful, right? And so today my prayer is that as we spend this time together in the workshop, that God will use his word as a tool in all of our lives to shape us and form us and help us become more like Jesus. Today here at Crossroads, we will continue our journey through the Sermon on the Mount, which is found in Matthew chapters 5, 6, and 7. I hope you have a Bible handy and I hope you already have it open to Matthew chapter 5 so that you can actually see the words that we'll read together today. And if you're still finding Matthew chapter 5, let me just quickly remind you that this sermon, the Sermon on the Mount, was a sermon that Jesus preached. And in this sermon, he gives a really clear description of what his followers are like, or at least what we're supposed to be like. So over the next several months, actually, week by week, Sunday by Sunday, here at Crossroads, we will be discovering together a different facet or a different aspect of this really interesting and important description that Jesus gives of his followers. And of course, all of you are cordially invited to join me on this journey. So the first section of the Sermon on the Mount is found in Matthew chapter 5, verses 3 through 12. And in this section, we find eight uh, beatitudes, eight short expressions of divine blessing. And when we put these eight expressions of divine blessing together, these eight beatitudes, it gives us a clear but pretty general picture of what followers of Jesus are like. And then later on in the sermon, Jesus will get more into the specific details. So uh, we're still in the first section of the sermon. 
And a couple of weeks ago, a couple of Sundays ago, uh, we learned together from the first beatitude that the people who enjoy the blessing of God are people who recognize their deep need for God. Uh, Followers of Jesus are people who recognize that they have absolutely nothing to contribute to their entrance into the kingdom of heaven. They're people who understand that they are completely dependent upon God's mercy and His grace for their salvation. Then last week, last Sunday, we looked together at the second beatitude, and we discovered that the people that enjoy the blessing of God are those people who mourn. Followers of Jesus are people who are truly repentant of their sin. There are people who are so troubled by their sin that they're moved to seek God's forgiveness and to change their sinful behavior. So today we come to the third of these eight Beatitudes. It's found in Matthew chapter 5 verse 5. And if you're participating in our Bible memory project as we journey through the Sermon on the Mount, this is the verse that you'll want to be memorizing this week. Matthew chapter 5 verse 5. And this is what it says. God blesses those who are humble, for they will inherit the whole earth. God blesses those who are humble, for they will inherit the whole earth. So, according to this verse, according to this beatitude, who are the people that enjoy the blessing of God? Who are the people that enjoy that deep sense of inner well-being, contentment, and satisfaction that God gives to those He approves of? Well, I think the answer is really clear, isn't it? It's those who are humble. Those who are humble. The people that enjoy the blessing of God are the people who are humble. Uh, Many translations of the Bible into English use here in this verse, instead of the word humble, the word meek. Probably you've heard that before. Maybe you already have the Beatitudes memorized in maybe an older translation of the Bible. And you probably memorized something along the lines of blessed are the meek. The thing is, this word in the original language, it's really pretty hard to translate completely. So that's why some translations use the word humble and other translations use the word meek. Uh, Meekness and humility are actually very similar, but they're slightly different in their focus. So, humility is a non-prideful attitude towards self, while meekness is being humble in how we treat other people. So, I don't know if you could maybe think of it this way, the focus of humility is inward, while the focus of meekness is outward. Meekness is humility expressed in how we treat other people, how we treat the people around us. Um, My favorite English teacher once told me that maybe a good way to remember the difference between humility and meekness would be like this. Meekness is one of the fruits of true humility. Meekness is one of the fruits of true humility. It occurs to me that, you know, those Jewish people who were listening to Jesus preach on the mountainside that day, they would have immediately thought about Moses from the Old Testament when they heard Jesus talk about meekness. 
Uh, in Numbers chapter 12, verse 3, we read the following words. Numbers 12, 3 says, Now Moses was very humble, or meek, more meek than any other person on earth. Moses was very meek, more meek than any other person on earth. The context in which we find this verse is uh, Moses, you know, he was the main leader of the nation of Israel. He was a strong leader with great authority. And he was being powerfully criticized by his siblings. Aaron and Miriam. And in his response to this really strong criticism that he was receiving from Aaron and Miriam, Moses acted with meekness because he was, as this verse says, the meekest man in all the earth. Instead of, you know, lashing out at Aaron and Miriam or maybe criticizing them back, or maybe punishing them in some way, Moses just let God deal with Aaron and Miriam. Moses responded in meekness. And as Jesus' followers that day were listening to him on that mountainside, I'm just, I'm just sure that they, in their minds, drifted to what they knew about Moses and his example of meekness, which has to do with being humble in our behavior towards other people. I think it's interesting to note that this special word occurs only four times in the whole New Testament. So it really is a, a pretty special word. It occurs obviously here in Matthew 5.5, 5, which we've already read together. But it appears only three other times in the whole New Testament, and I'd like to read you these verses where it appears. So, the second time it appears is in Matthew 11, 28, and 29. In Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 and 29, we read the following. Then Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, because I am meek and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. So in this verse, Jesus is described as someone who's meek. The third time this special word appears in the New Testament is in Matthew 21.5. The context of Matthew 21.5 is, uh, it's the account of the uh, triumphal entry of Jesus into the city of Jerusalem on Holy Week. And we find in Matthew 21 verse 5 some words from Zechariah the prophet, which are quoted here. And this is what it says. Tell the people of Jerusalem, look, your king is coming to you. He is meek, riding on a donkey, riding on a donkey's colt. So again here, Jesus, the Messiah, the king, is described as someone who is meek. And then finally, uh, the last time this word appears in the New Testament is in 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 3 and 4. In 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 3 and 4, uh, we find some instructions that the Apostle Peter is writing to wives as they relate with their husbands. And this is what he says. He says, Don't be concerned about the outward beauty of fancy hairstyles, expensive jewelry, or beautiful clothes. You should clothe yourselves instead with the beauty that comes from within, the unfading beauty of a meek and quiet spirit, 
which is so precious to God. So meekness has to do with being humble in our behavior towards other people. Meekness flows out of true humility. Meekness is one of the fruits of true humility. So who are the people who enjoy the blessing of God? Who are the people that enjoy this deep sense of inner satisfaction, well-being, and contentment that God gives to those He approves of? Well, it's those people who are humble, those who are meek. And these are the people who will eventually inherit the whole earth. These are the people who will eventually rule and reign with Christ in the new heaven and the new earth. I can't even imagine how shocking <laughs> this third beatitude must have been to Jesus' original listeners. As they sat there on that mountainside that day and listened to him say these words about meekness, they must have been just blown away. These were Jewish people who were waiting for their Messiah to come and liberate them from their hated Roman oppressors, right? And then Jesus tells them that it is this meek and humble person who will rule and reign with him. Certainly very different than what Jesus' original listeners were thinking about. Thinking about a materialistic kingdom ushered in by military might. And also, I must confess, very different from what many people think today. Today, even within the church, there are many people who just don't understand, they just don't get it, that one of the most basic fundamental characteristics of followers of Jesus is meekness, humility. I fear that even within the family of God, many times people value power over meekness. I fear that many times, even within the family of God, we have a tendency to prioritize self-importance over humility. Followers of Jesus are humble. Followers of Jesus are meek. That's a lot to think about, isn't it? So as Jesus begins his description of his followers, he starts by saying that his followers are people who recognize that they have absolutely nothing to contribute to their salvation. That they are people who are truly repentant of their sin. And that they are people who are meek. People who are humble in the way they treat other people. These are the people that enjoy the blessing of God. These are the people that enjoy that deep sense of inner well-being, contentment, and satisfaction that God gives to those people of whom He approves. Are you one of those people? Think about it. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much again today for the opportunity to be together in this time and place and for the opportunity to explore really quickly just a tiny idea from your inspired book, the Bible. Thank you for reminding us today that you expect of us as your followers 
humility, meekness. You expect us to be humble in the way that we act towards the people around us. God, today we are forced to recognize that by nature we're really not very much that way. We tend to be so full of pride and so full of ourselves. And God, we just want to ask you today that as we have spent this time in this workshop (laughs) with your word, we just pray that your word would, would do its work in our lives. And that we would, even this very week, be becoming in this area of life more and more like you want us to be, more and more like you expect us to be, more and more in the image of Christ. God, we pray that that would be happening in our lives this week. Thank you. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. We want to thank you again for joining us today. We pray that today's message spoke to your heart and revealed a part of God, God's plan for you today. We also want to invite you to subscribe to this channel so that we can have more tools through this platform to reach more people. Because it's never been so easy to reach people for God. Just share a link, share a comment, send a message. People are hungry for content and we'll watch Binge watch, binge watch anything. Why not have a session of just watching scripture and watching sermons or reading Bible? So share this sermon and this service with them. We also want to invite you this Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. on Instagram Live where Pastor Steve will go deeper into today's message. And on behalf of the elders, the deacons, everybody in the CBC family, we want to thank you for your continued support for our our church. We also want to invite you to visit our website if you have any questions, doubts, or if we can be of any help to you. We are here for you, brother and sister. And finally, we want to invite you to lobby time. Spend time together. It doesn't have to be on the chat for this this platform. It could be maybe a message through through, um, WhatsApp or a message or call someone or Telegram or whatever. Just contact people. Use this time to contact your friends and family and neighbors and brothers and sisters to the community and to do fellowship. So thank you for being with us today. We pray that the Lord continues to bless you and keep you and protect you and revealing his, and we pray that he reveals his purpose to you during this historic time for our church in the world. Goodbye, everybody.